Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel where we simplify and explore the complex world of FIDIC contracts. Today is a special episode because we're diving deep into Clause 20.6 of the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. Often considered the cornerstone of dispute resolution in FIDIC contracts, this clause is a vital tool to have in your dispute resolution arsenal. But before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's build some foundational knowledge by clarifying a few key terms. First off, what exactly is arbitration? You've likely heard the term before, but let's break it down. Arbitration is a formal dispute resolution mechanism that serves as an alternative to going to court. In this process, a neutral third party, known as the arbitrator, is appointed to listen to both sides, examine evidence, and then make a decision. This decision is typically binding, meaning both parties must adhere to it. Arbitration can be quicker and less expensive than a court trial. But it's important to remember that it's usually a final avenue for resolution, as the decisions are often not appealable. Next on our list is P2P, or peer-to-peer -peer arbitration. This is a modern twist on the traditional arbitration process. Instead of relying on a centralized body or institution, P2P arbitration allows the disputing parties to interact directly with each other in the dispute resolution process. This method is often facilitated by blockchain technology, making the process not only secure but also transparent. It's particularly useful in disputes where both parties are looking for a quick and decentralized solution. Before we move forward, let's also understand what adjudication means, as it's another term often used in the context of dispute resolution. Adjudication is an accelerated form of dispute resolution, wherein a third-party adjudicator provides a decision that is temporarily binding. It's a quicker process, aimed at resolving disputes as they arise, particularly useful in construction projects where time is often of the essence. Unlike arbitration, adjudication decisions can be reviewed and potentially overturned in later stages of dispute resolution, such as in arbitration or litigation. All right, now that we've set the stage, let's delve into the primary objective of Clause 20.6. This clause isn't just something you stumble upon. It's a meticulously designed safety net. Its primary role kicks in when the Dispute Adjudication Board, or DAB, fails to provide a resolution that both parties consider final and binding. In such cases, Clause 20.6 elevates the matter to international arbitration, providing a structured and universally accepted pathway for conflict resolution. It's the big guns of dispute resolution, ensuring that no stone is left unturned when it comes to settling disputes. With this clause, both parties agree to a mechanism that has the gravitas and structure to deliver finality in any dispute. Moving on. Let's dive into the implications of invoking Clause 20.6. This isn't just a casual step, it's a significant move with lasting impact. Here are some key aspects to consider. Invoking this clause signifies that you've reached the end of the road in terms of dispute resolution. It means that all other avenues, such as amicable settlements and DAB decisions, have been exhausted. The outcome of the arbitration is final, closing the door on any further disputes. This level of finality can be both reassuring and daunting, so it's not a step to be taken lightly. The language used in the arbitration proceedings is critically important. This is referred to in subclause 1.4 and is crucial for maintaining legal consistency. It ensures that everyone is, quite literally and metaphorically, on the same page throughout the proceedings. The authority granted to the arbitrators is extensive. They have the power to revisit, review, and even revise any decisions, instructions, or valuations made by the engineer or the DAB. This level of comprehensive re-examination allows for a more nuanced and thorough resolution, but also introduces a level of unpredictability. One of the unique features of this clause is that parties are not restricted to the evidence or arguments that were initially presented to the DAB. This freedom allows for a more exhaustive examination of the dispute, which could be beneficial 
but may also extend the duration of the resolution process. It's crucial to understand that the arbitration can take place either before or after the completion of the works, without affecting the contractual obligations of the parties involved. This flexibility is often lauded for its practicality, but also poses potential operational challenges. Now that we've understood the implications, let's look at some primary aspects that govern the arbitration process under Clause 20.6. Unless the parties agree otherwise, the arbitration proceedings will be governed by the rules of arbitration of the International Chamber of Commerce ICC. The ICC is a globally recognized institution, headquartered in Paris, France. It's known for its neutrality and extensive expertise in resolving international disputes. By default, the clause suggests a panel of three arbitrators. These arbitrators will be appointed according to the ICC's rules. Having a panel of three ensures a balanced and thorough decision-making process, particularly crucial in substantial construction disputes. The clause itself doesn't explicitly state the location for arbitration, but implies that it should be a neutral venue. This is usually in a jurisdiction with a well-established legal framework for arbitration, often a country that is neither the home of the employer nor the contractor. Let's now move on to what the experts have to say about Clause 20.6. Their insights can provide a nuanced understanding of how this clause operates in the real world. Experts often recommend the International Chamber of Commerce ICC, as a neutral body for arbitration especially in contracts involving parties from different countries. Its global recognition and exhaustive rules provide a robust framework for fair arbitration, making it a preferred choice for many. Legal experts view the provision allowing for new evidence during arbitration as a double-edged sword. While it offers flexibility, it also has the potential to prolong the dispute resolution process. This is something to consider when heading into arbitration under this clause. The extensive powers granted to the arbitrators are generally seen as beneficial. However, experts caution that this could also result in unpredictability in the arbitration outcome. So parties should be prepared for various possible scenarios. The flexibility regarding when arbitration may commence either before or after the completion of the works is often often lauded for its practicality. However, experts also warn that arbitration during ongoing work could create operational challenges, affecting the project timeline and costs. Finally, let's look at some real-world case studies and illustrations that can help us better understand the application of Clause 20.6 in a project between a French employer and a Chinese contractor. The language for communications was not explicitly stated, leading to confusion. Invoking Clause 20.6, they proceeded with arbitration under ICC rules, which helped specify the language and streamline the process. In a project in the Middle East, an arbitrator utilized their powers under Clause 20.6 to overturn an engineer's decision, which had been a point of contention between the parties. This showcases the arbitrator's authority to review and revise decisions, making it a game-changer in dispute resolution. For a large-scale project in South America, multiple disputes arose at different phases. The parties used Clause 20.6 to conduct separate arbitrations for each phase, allowing work to proceed without waiting for a single, final arbitration outcome. A Canadian employer and an Australian contractor chose Singapore as the arbitration location, thanks to its modern arbitration laws and adherence to international treaties. This aligns well with Clause 20.6 Seconds Implied Recommendation for a Neutral Location. To round off our deep dive into Clause 20.6, Let's explore how it interacts with other clauses in the Fittick Yellow Book. Understanding these interactions will give you a 360-degree view of its role and implications. The language specified in this clause is of utmost importance, as it forms the basis for arbitration proceedings. This ensures legal clarity and is directly referenced in Clause 20.6 to maintain consistency. Any determinations made by the engineer can be reviewed and potentially revised by the arbitrator 
arbitrators during the arbitration process. This gives Clause 20.6 a significant influence over Clause 3.5 underlining its comprehensive scope in dispute resolution. This clause outlines the process for obtaining a decision from the DAB. If that decision is not final and binding, Clause 20.6 comes into play, acting as the ultimate step in the dispute resolution ladder. If the DAB's appointment expires without reaching a decision, then Clause 20.6 acts as the fallback mechanism, serving as the last resort for resolving the dispute. These clauses discuss the various claims that can be made by the employer and the contractor. The validity and enforceability of these claims may ultimately be decided by Clause 20.6, adding another layer to its utility. In extreme cases where the contract might be terminated due to disputes, Clause 20.6 can be invoked to settle any resulting conflicts, providing a structured and legally binding resolution mechanism. If a force major event leads to a dispute, Clause 20.6 could serve as the final avenue for resolution, especially if the event and its consequences were not clearly defined or resolved by the engineer or the DAB. Thank you for joining us on this comprehensive exploration of Clause 20.6 in the FIDIC Yellow Book 1999. We've covered its purpose, implications, expert opinions, and even real-world case studies to provide you with a well-rounded understanding of this essential clause. For more in-depth information and expert insights on FIDIC contracts, don't hesitate to visit Wisdom Waves Hub. We are dedicated to making complex contractual topics accessible to all, ensuring you have the knowledge you need to navigate the intricate world of FIDIC contracts. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your colleagues, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content. See you in the next video.